and she laid him in a manger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At the start, at the end, I should say, of the Second Vatican Council, uh, this feast was changed radically. It became uh, the Mother of God, the Feast of the Mother of God. But prior to that, for centuries and centuries and centuries, uh, the Catholics flocked to their churches by a holy moral obligation to attend Mass and to abstain from all servile work on this day, the New Year's Day, because it is eight days after the birth of Christ, and that meant the first shedding of His blood. That's the importance of this feast. That's why yesterday was not a holy day of obligation. It was also octave of Christmas. But today is a very special moment so that Christians need that fresh new blood to be splattered upon their souls at the beginning of this new year. That's the whole sense of this great feast. And so... I'd like to continue to reflect on this aspect of Christ's coming, and that is His love for mortification, love of penance, love of suffering for our salvation. He manifests this in the very first hours of His life in a very graphic way today as St. Joseph uh, circumcises the Lord in the privacy of Bethlehem. But I would also like to look at another aspect of when the Blessed Virgin placed our Lord Jesus in a manger. It was the first monarchical practice of wearing a hair shirt, the straw. And sometimes when burlap bag rubs up against my skin, I break out in rashes and all kinds of things. Uh, so our Lord, it's a great mystery that he allowed himself to be tortured by straw and hay in the manger. The Blessed Virgin, not having wool, made do with straw. She gathered and then put it in a manger and laid him there, swaddled in bands as a mummy, as we explained in yesterday's sermon. St. Francis of Sissy contemplating this scene as one day he was eating at the table in his dining room with his friars, listening to the reading during the course of the meal. He heard these words of the gospel mentioned, and she laid him in a manger. And immediately he got up from his place at table and said, What? My Lord was laid on straw, and shall I continue to sit? And thus he plopped himself on the floor and finished his scanty meal. To contemplate how much our Lord, even from the get-go, subjected himself to tortures and penances uh, for our salvation. That's the only thing an infant can do is just allow himself to lay on some straw. He can't do greater things. He'll have to wait for Joseph to come and circumcise him in order to offer up more sacrifice. So from the very beginning, our Lord accustomed Himself uh, to sufferings for our salvation, humiliations. And so there's a question here. If it is so rough for a baby to lie down on straw or hay, why didn't the Blessed Virgin, who loved Him so much, keep him simply in her arms instead of subjecting him to such pain and humiliation. Well, St. Thomas of Villanova gives us the answer. He says, Nor would she have laid him in such a place, in other words, the manger with the straw, at all, unless there was a great mystery at hand. And what is this great mystery? How is it possible the Blessed Virgin, who's the most delicate of all souls, the most charitable, would submit her son to such torture, already coming in contact with hair shirts 
from his very birth? St. Peter Damien gives the answer to this question. He says that Jesus wished as soon as he was born to be placed on a bundle of hay in order to teach us mortification of the senses. He lay down there so as to lay down the law of martyrdom. End quote. Now, we have many centuries of proven Christendom to teach us that we still have residues of the law of charity even within our civil dealings. But the world that Christ came to was practically all void of this. It was a cold, erroneous, sinful world that Christ came. Just all you have to do is review Romans chapter 1 and you'll find the list of vices and tragedies and devastations of the human spirit during those times. As Father Hardin says, the Romans had a practice of having a big, large barrel of water when at, at the woman's room when she gives birth. So if it was a handicapped baby, the father of the family just has an option of drowning the baby. It was just a normal thing, just throw the baby out. Uh, that's the world that Christ came to. And as we know from uh, Greek literature as well, all the Greek rivers were filled with infants, uh, handicapped. Then, uh, infants yeah. at the whim of one who doesn't care just throwing them so that's why our Lord came aggressively to mortify himself from the very first hour of his life to suffer to embrace those monastic fastings and penances but above all the mortification of one's own opinions and one's own judgments to submit one's freedom totally to God through his superiors, through God's representatives. And this will be a tradition he'll keep all his childhood, all the 33 years, the 30 years at least of his hidden life, was submitting himself to Joseph and to the Blessed Virgin. For this he chose the most acute sufferings that an infant can endure to lay willingly upon straw. So Jesus himself inspired the Blessed Virgin Mary to lay him on straw. She wouldn't have done it on her own accord. She was inspired by the Holy Ghost. This is what Christ wanted. He wanted that. So from her arms he goes to the prickling of the needle-sharp straws. As we continue to contemplate this great mystery of his sufferings, his mortified little body, today's circumcision, the, the bloodshed of his most precious blood today, let us pray with St. Alphonsus Liguri. This prayer, or a similar prayer in our own words when we come up to communion, Oh, my Jesus, even as an infant, Thou wouldst begin to be my Redeemer. Thou didst choose a bed of straw to deliver me from the fires of hell, into which I have so many times deserved to be cast. Thou didst mourn and cry upon this bed of straw to obtain for me the pardon from thy father thy tears from this manger how they afflict me yet they console me but I will not leave thee alone there to suffer and cry alone I also weep with thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen